Now go to 1 John chapter 3. Because in, in 1 John chapter 3, there's a scripture that people will twist in order to teach this doctrine that says, hey, if you're saved, you're not going to keep sinning. And you've heard people teach this, haven't you? Hey, if you see somebody and they just keep on sinning, well, that just proves that they're not saved. Well, my answer to that is, well, then nobody's saved. And the Apostle Paul wasn't saved. Then John wasn't. And then we're all doomed. <laughs> because nobody is without sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So whenever you say that to people, here's what they'll say. Well, I'm not saying that you have to stop sinning altogether. And then we enter just this major gray area. You know what I mean? Because people say, hey, if you, if you want to be saved, you know, you have to repent of your sins. And, you know, if you're still living the same way, you're not really saved. And there needs to be a change. And you need to live right and everything. But then it's like, but then you say to people like, wait a minute, are you saying that, that you're just going to totally stop sinning? Well, not totally. You know, it's like, well, you just have to kind of try. Well, there has to be some change. Or, well, you know, you're not going to have a habit of sin. Or you're not going to sin lots. You know, or you're not going to sin hard. You know, you're just going to do the, the light sinning. But see, that's just such a gray area and it's such confusion. I mean, are Christians capable of sinning or not? Or are they just above sin now? They're just delivered from sin. And they say, well, you're delivered from the power of sin. Right, God gives you the power to overcome sin if you want to. But what if you choose to go into temptation? You will, they. What if you get up in the morning and walk in the flesh? You're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay. So what does it say? Everybody look down at your King James Bible. Well, Brother Garrett reads for you from the ESV. Read for us 1 John 3, 9 in the ESV, nice and loud. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. Okay, so you notice all the extra words that they're adding? So instead of saying what the Bible says, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, he that is born of God doesn't make a practice of sinning. What is that supposed to mean? So I guess they don't set up an office somewhere and put up a little tile outside the door that says, Stephen L. Anderson, you know, practitioner of sin. <laughs> Stephen L. Anderson, you know, professional sinner for hire. We didn't make a practice of sinning. Set up shop as a sinner. What in the world is that supposed to mean? He doesn't make a practice of sinning. And then the next one, they add another word. He doesn't keep on sinning. So you can sin a little bit, just don't keep on sinning. And you know, well, you can sin as long as you don't make a practice of sinning. So basically, as long as your sins are isolated incidents and they're not coming up as a pattern. So this, this, this adding of words of, well, practicing sin, you know why they put those words in there? Is because here's what they want to say. There's got to be some change. You know, I mean, well, you're still sinning, but at least you're not making a practice of sinning. At least you don't just keep on sinning. And look, this is a lie and a false doctrine that is created by that version. So if you have the ESV and you're like, oh, wow, the Bible says if, if I keep on sinning, I'm not saved. That means I better stop sinning to get saved. And then it's like a work salvation. Or, oh, well, if I make a practice of sin, I'm not really saved. I bet, you know, I, I guess, I mean, I guess I have to live a pretty clean life. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I have to live a pretty clean life. No, that's not what the Bible says. You believe to be saved. It's faith alone. But this whole new doctrine has been created by these false versions inserting this lying, false teaching of, oh, continuing to sin and practicing sin. That's not what the Bible says. You say, well, how do you know the ESV is wrong? Well, listen to this. I looked up, and, and get ready to turn to some scripture in the ESV. So I looked up that word in the Greek that they're making such a big make a practice of. And, and the word in the Greek is basically the word that just means to do, to do something. He's saying, you know, if you're born of God, you don't do sin. But in English, we don't say do sin. We say commit sin. But it's the same meaning. So I looked up, I looked up in the Greek New Testament all the other places where that word is used. 
in the exact same verb tense, the exact word in the exact way. And I'm gonna read for you some of the examples because it's funny how the ESV doesn't do that in other places. To the identical word, they don't add all this weird make a practice of and keep on doing it. They just translate it normal in a whole bunch of places. Then when they get to 1 John 3, they take the identical word and add all that just for their false doctrine. Well, there's no such thing as a continuously carnal Christian. But listen to this. Look at Matthew chapter 8. Here's the identical word, identical verb, identical verb tense, that they're making a bit, oh, it's a continuous. And look, the, one of the biggest lies I ever heard when I'd be in these churches where they're constantly going back to the Greek is this thing of, oh, it's continuous. Right. And they do this all the time. And, and look, Garrett is saying that's right because he went to seminary and heard this stuff constantly in the Greek classes, right? About, it's the ongoing, continuous, making a habit of, blah, blah, blah. Let's see if that jives with these other uses of the identical word, okay? Listen to this from Matthew 8, 9. Read it for us from the ESV, Brother Carrick. For I, too, am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. Right, so it's pretty, pretty much the same thing as the King James, right? For I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goes, and do another, come, and he cometh, and to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. Now, what, if the ESV were going to be consistent, then they'd be saying, I say unto my servant, make a practice of habitually doing this, and then he makes a practice of habitually doing it. <laughs> Is that what it says? I say to my servant, keep on doing it, and he keeps on doing it. I mean, isn't that what they're, that's what they're saying? If you go back to the Greek, that's what that word means. Isn't that what they're saying? Liars. But you know what they prey upon the fact is that, you know, people don't know Greek, which I'm not saying they should have to know Greek because you got the perfect word of God right here in the King James. This is all you need. Go to John verse three, uh, John chapter three, verse two. This is the one where, you know, the man comes to Jesus by night and says unto him, Rabbi, you know, Nicodemus, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these things that thou doest except God be with him. You know, so I guess in the ESV, it basically just says, no one can do these signs that you do unless God's with him. But if they were going to translate it the way they did the other one, you know, no one can habitually make a practice of the things that you do, Jesus, unless God with him. Well, let's prove it further. John 13 7 is the verse where Jesus is washing the disciples' feet. Now, here's what's funny about this example. How many times did Jesus wash the disciples' feet? Once. He never did this before. He never did this after. So was this some habitually thing that he made a practice of? No. Same word. Same Greek word. Okay, read it for us in the ESV. You look down at the real Bible. Jesus answered him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Okay, so why didn't he say, what I am habitually making a practice of doing on an ongoing basis repeatedly, you don't understand. Because it was a one-time thing. So isn't it a fraud when they say, oh, well, that verse, that word, when you go back to the Greek, that verb tense, you know, is referring to that which is ongoing. And by the way, who here speaks fluent Spanish? You got a few people that speak fluent Spanish. Look, you know the difference between the imperfect and the preterite, past tense? You know, basically, it will be the difference between like comia and como or come, right? That's the difference that we're talking about. And, and here's the thing. Anybody who speaks Spanish knows that that's not always some habitual, ongoing, repeated action when you use that imperfect, is it? Because, for example, you could say, you know, I was eating, I was eating breakfast when the phone rang. And how would, you, how would you say, I was eating breakfast when the phone rang? Did you hear that? Estaba comiendo. Huh? <laughs> no, he knows what that means. But, you know, oh, that was ongoing habitual. Look, that might have been the only day he ate breakfast in his whole life. But he's going to use estaba because it was something that was ongoing while the phone rang that one time. And Jesus used that verb of, you know, hey, what I do now, you don't understand, because he was in the process of doing it. Not because he habitually or repeatedly did it on an ongoing basis. And I know I'm going too deep, but just realize that these versions are just making stuff up to fit their doctrine. And when it's convenient for them, they translate it normal everywhere else. And then just they get to that one place in 1 John 3, and then they just go nuts with it. And a few other places to bolster this phony 
doctrine. You know, and, and I had a whole bunch of other examples here, but I'm, I'm boring you. So don't let anybody tell, because look, I've been at this thing for a long time, my friend, and I've been preaching and soul winning for a long time, and every single time I bring up 1 John 3 to one of these false prophets, they always correct me. Yeah, but that means ongoing. Oh, that's habitual. No, 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 that's repeated. No, if you go back to the Greek, well, you know what? That's not how the King James translated it. So I guess those 54 great scholars were all wrong, and I'm wrong, and I guess the ESV was wrong in all the other verses where they translated it normally. It's a fraud, my friend. The emperor is not wearing any clothes, friend. And these people are just repeating stuff and everybody just believes it because they heard it. Oh, it's ongoing. Oh, it's repeated. Listen to me. If you're saved, you can sin on an ongoing basis and repeatedly. There are people who do it. It's not right. They're going to be punished, but it's possible. But they're teaching this doctrine that, well, everybody who's saved just only sins every once in a while. It's a fraud.